Welcome to Railway Legends, Myths, and Stories. I'm Kevin Stanley. In this episode, I was originally going to talk about the two great railways, the Union Pacific building from the east and the Central Pacific building from the west that joined their two lines across the western United States in the mid-19th century. However, while this is a magnificent and well-known story, I don't think we can do it proper justice right now. So what I want to do is to discuss the spot where these two railways join together. Okay, let's go pound some spikes. The location where the two lines met, Promontory Summit, or just plain Promontory, is often mistakenly identified as Promontory Point. Okay. Perhaps I am nitpicking a bit, but if you look at a map, you'll see that these two places are a fair distance from each other. It's not that this mistake has been made by just average people. No, this mistake has been made by railway historians, rail authors, and far too many documentaries. Truly, I have no idea why this particular mistake is repeatedly made. Perhaps it is that the names are similar, but this seems to be a bit of a poor explanation to me. It's one of the specific mistakes made by so many people and so many documentaries that it led us to make these videos. Let's hope that we here at RLMS have a better uh, track record. The original U.S. Transcontinental Railway line ran north of the Great Salt Lake through the Promontory Mountains, and it is this line which ran via Promontory Summit that I'm discussing here. The line was later rebuilt, and the route was changed across the Great Salt Lake. The relocated line comes very near Promontory Point. Possibly this is why people have confused the two. Today, there is only a short section of line at Promontory. The relayed tracks of the Golden Spike National Historic Park where the original line was first completed on the 10th of May, 1869. Today, you can visit the site, see the replica locomotives, and maybe even participate in a recreation of the event. I was fortunate enough to visit this site in July 2019, just over 150 years after the original completion of the route. They do a nice job of getting the general public to take part in a recreation of this historic event. Bringing these bits of history to life is one of the wonderful things about such historic sites. To stage this, they make available some 19th century costumes, simple things like coats and hats. Then they hand out simplified scripts based on what was actually said and done on the great day when the rails were joined, and they divvy up the parts among the volunteers. One of the staff helps direct the group through the ceremony. I was very happy that I landed a role that I felt I could really get behind, portraying Governor Leland Stanford of the Central Pacific and delivering his speech from the original ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Central Pacific Railroad, Governor Leland Stanford. Gentlemen, the Pacific Railroad Companies accept with pride and satisfaction these golden and silver tokens of your appreciation of the importance of this enterprise to the material interests of the sections which you represent on this occasion, the material interests of our whole country, east and west, north and south. These gifts shall receive a fitting place in the superstructure of our road. The day may not be far distant when these tracks will be found, when three tracks, sorry, three tracks will be found necessary to accommodate the commerce and travel, which will seek a transit across the continent. And in conclusion, I will add that we hope to do ultimately what is impossible on long lines, transport heavy, coarse, and cheap products for all distances at living rates to the trade. I thank you. Thank you. 
And yes, just like the real Stanford, I missed the spike when I tried to drive it in. But I was following the script directions when I did it. I had a wonderful time playing this role. And my thanks to our friend Scott for the impromptu recording of the event. Now I will talk about what happened to the rails of the original Transcontinental Railroad across the USA and specifically the section removed from the state of Utah. While the original line around the north side of the Great Salt Lake was part of the first Transcontinental Line, it did not stay in mainline service for long. While Promontory was the original junction point of the Union Pacific and Central Pacific, its isolated location made it a terrible place for an interchange. Soon after service began, the Central Pacific bought the section of line from Promontory to Ogden from the Union Pacific and moved the interchange there. The Promontory line was both roundabout and difficult to operate and maintain, and soon a project was started to build a bridge in more or less a straight line across the Great Salt Lake. The route around the north end of the Great Salt Lake was initially set left in place, but as time went on, it was used less and less. Even though there were severe speed restrictions on the first causeway and trestle, the new route across the lake saved so much time that it now handled most of the traffic. For some time, the original route was kept as a secondary line, but with little to no local traffic on the original route, it was hardly used at all. During the Second World War, the original line across the north end of the lake via Promontory Summit was abandoned and the rails were removed. Rather than being melted down for scrap, we've been told, although we cannot confirm it, that the rails were taken elsewhere and reused for military purposes. To this day, we think that rails that once carried trains across the windswept Promontory Mountains are in use near Hawthorne, Nevada, as part of the large military weapons depot there. While the bridge across the lake was a much more direct route, the salt water and salt-laden air took a heavy toll on bridge members and materials. The condition of the long trestle meant that only relatively low speeds were permitted. Eventually, to overcome the operational problems, the bridge was replaced with a massive landfill causeway which is still in use today. The building of the causeway might be a good tale for another day. You can see some of the pilings from the original bridge at the Utah State Railroad Museum in Ogden, along with lots more information about the rails in this area. I hope we have entertained you and made the point that the rails did not join at Promontory Point. The point where they did join was at Promontory Summit. Um, er, well, I hope that last bit was not too confusing. And as always, we'll see you on the train.